This episode was helped brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. They're a brewery out there in Eastern Iowa. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by Kelowna and check out their brewery. Great food at the restaurant there. Great beer, obviously. If you're in the Midwest, check out any Hy-Vee's. I believe they carry the six packs and they have different types of flavors. So you guys are going to want to, you know, definitely try that out. And I think throughout this whole process, Fishing Kid and myself for Beer Fish Fanatics, we're going to be doing some giveaways here and there. If you guys can go ahead and tag us here and there with your Kelowna beer. So other than that, enjoy the episode, guys. It's all right. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Granny with My Pop Fishing. We have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And today uh, we're in beautiful Iowa in my backyard, just uh, having a couple beers. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a barbecue. And uh, we decided to have one of our uh, fishing buddies, Mr. Mark, here join us today. How's it going, Mark? Pretty good, guys. What's going on, everybody? Here we go. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. Uh, I'm drinking today the Vienna Symphony, the uh, Vienna style lager. So I got that one. What you got, Kit? I got the same thing. Um, I've had this one quite a few times already. Oh, do you like it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. And, and then I, I, might, I might have to steal that from you. I've never had it. Jeez. Yeah, Mark's never had it. He should <laughs> He should get this one. I've had it a few times okay, already. Crack, crack it open for him then, guy. Hello. Oh, you got to do Denver style, man. It's Denver not, style. Yeah, you, style. You, in case they're watching or listening, you don't want to get you know <laughs> penalized by my in-laws. <laughs> Thank you, know you sir. So Denver style is a rule that uh, Grandy's brother-in-laws introduced us to is you never crack open your own beer. Very true. I, I, I kind of learned that, but sometimes I go back to my roots. I don't give a shit. I just grab you a beer. Just drink it already. And if you uh, <laughs> hand someone a beer, it is your duty to open it for them before you hand it to them. Something like that. I don't know. So. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Yep. It is damn good. I'm not going to lie. On a hot day. It's not too hot, though. Uh, today is probably one of the most tamest days in the past i would say about 10 days um here in central iowa as we mentioned previous episodes it's been beyond hot as shit there's nothing compared to yeah. yesterday so to, yeah. yeah today oh, we're, yeah. we're literally just what about 80 ish 80 a little bit 85 above 80. i think 85. was the high and with a nice breeze so if you guys hear a little bit of wind sorry uh i think the mics are doing pretty good though they'll be able to to, to minimize the wind here so it's not too bad but uh, today um I was out fishing in the morning. I did really well today. We'll we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then uh, fishing kit had a, a nice adventure. I want to hear about it too. Uh, we got Mark on here because there's a few questions I want to ask him um, because he, unlike oh. a lot of other people that we had on the podcast and you know fishing kit uh, and myself got obviously Garmin stuff. Uh, this cat over here has got the 360. So I want to pick his brain a little bit about that since you know this is a, a user's you know i guess you can say review that would be interesting to hear hummingbird hummingbird not, not so much to pick but yeah i can't hear you, can't hear you bring there we go. yeah not so much to pick but yeah i'll give my thoughts on it i guess there we go there we go so but, wait i'm gonna go back to the heat um right. sorry do you, you hear about uh interstate 80 it the, oh, yeah, it I buckled because it was so hot and they had yeah. to close what? close the lane. Uh, yeah. Where at? Uh, I don't remember what stretch, but it happened yesterday. Yeah, because we had a hundred degree weather today. I think there was there was record. It was like a record heat wave for a lot of places. I'm like damn, that's crazy. Yeah, it buckled when you, when you say buckle. What does that mean? Oh, it just started cracking. I guess. Oh, the whole interstate. I think uh, a just, lane. Just a section of it. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. They had to close it down for a section. From heat. Yeah, from the heat. That's the, uh, is that an engineering issue? Uh, uh, <laughs> might be. I, Where, uh, where's all our taxes going to, right? Well, I, yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, it, you would think they designed it a little bit better that to, in Iowa, you know, it's going to get super hot and humid. You would be able to, whatever concrete it uses, I don't know, you guys could tell me, I have no idea. But you would think design and engineering should be able to create something that withstands that. So do you do they use concrete or asphalt for Interstate 80? I'm guessing asphalt, right? I don't know. Or concrete. I have no idea. I would think it'd be asphalt. At least the, the top layer is asphalt. Huh? Because asphalt gets soft at a certain uh, temperature. Gotcha. So so then they kind of did design it for that, but I guess they didn't design it. F 
It wasn't even it wasn't even crazy hot though. I mean, it's only been in the high nineties, hundred. It hasn't been like super hundreds. I mean, it's still a hundred and some <laughs> degrees yesterday. I guess yeah. Yeah. that's true. All right. Very true. Very true. Uh, we'll start with fishing kit, man. Uh, I I wanted to hear because uh, we talked about this I think on the last podcast with Butters. I think they were planning on to to do a little trip. I think fishing kit's first time on the river that he was going to actually take the kayak on the river. So that was kind of cool. And then first time camping on the river. Yeah, right? first time floating the river, first time camping at the river. So um, let's start with there. What was your experiences and what do you think of it as the moment? Uh, first off, I got a, you know, I have a much better appreciation and respect to those guys that do this regularly and especially those guys that do it solo right? like man you guys are hardcore uh i am not quite a river rat i think i'll call myself a river mouse <laughs> but uh it's, it's it was interesting man because just flowing the river there's more stuff you gotta pay attention to um our our plan was just to find a sandbar and camp overnight throw out lines we had we had live bait bluegills sunfish and i don't know what i'm looking for butters he's done it uh maybe a couple dozen times he's been doing pretty good this year but i i don't know if he'd he'd call himself an expert or anything is just we we're just looking for uh sandbars across from deep cuts so if it's so if it's a deep cut on the other side and there's a sandbar sandbar on one side, we just want to hang out on that sandbar. And uh, but that's like every turn, it's like a deep <laughs> cup cut on one side and a sandbar on the other side. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure there's more nuances than that. But uh, for a first time, it was it was pretty pretty interesting because like I said yesterday was a hundred and some degrees. And it was supposed to be windy, looking at the forecast, 20-something mile per hour. We get out there, barely any wind, and it was, like, freaking hot. My GoPro overheated. Oh, no. Because I got a GoPro Hero 10. <laughs> it just turned off. It, it it literally says GoPro is too hot, and it shuts off. Doesn't nice. give you... Wow. Well, yeah. does the 5 do that? The 5 still going strong. The does it fi- does it give you, like, a, a heat warning or anything? No. Nope. It, it, it was just fine yesterday, huh? Well, it kept running. It's probably not good for it, but it kept running. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, yeah, I don't know. I had no expectations. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I could get back in one piece the next day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so how did you guys figure out where the hell you guys were going to camp that night? Did you guys plan it ahead, like, or were you guys just kind of floating and like, all right, this looks like a good spot? Well, Butters never floated that stretch. Okay. Obviously, I never have. It was basically, like I said, Deep cut on one side, and then sandbar on the other side is what we're looking for, which right. is about every other bend in the river. So you just... At least as far as I can tell. Um, I think ideally you want more of a drop-off on the sandbar side, mm-hmm. because I guess at night, that's when the flatheads come out. They're just chilling in those deep holes in the deep cuts, then they'll come out at night feeding. Um, even at night, you hear stuff... Just like <laughs> <laughs> makes that sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it, it was for not being that far from town. It the was. Next thing you know, is butters just chomping, chopping on <laughs> right. chips or something. <laughs> yeah, for for not being that far from town, um, at least on our float back, we didn't see anybody. Um, while we were camping, we saw a few tubers and kayakers float by, but. They weren't fishermen or anything. They were just floating down the river, drinking beer, pretty much. Um, I don't know. It was a. It was, I'd do it again, That's even so though the goal was to catch a flathead. Spoilers. Yeah. We did not get a flathead last night. Right. Uh, we did catch channels. I didn't get skunked. We of got. Of course not. <laughs> it's fishing kick. Guys. Well, I he barely was... didn't get skunked. I caught one fish. Had butter do. He caught two, maybe three channels. Nice. Um, we we both missed a ton of fish. Had a lot of bites. That, but they could have been channel cats. I don't know about turtles because we didn't hook up with any turtles. I mean, it could have been flatheads too that we missed. Yeah. Uh, we also got 
thunderstormed on last night. <laughs> so that was interesting. So it went from 100 degrees and then rain. Yeah, it went from heat wave to thunderstorm, wind, clear skies, and then rain again <laughs> all last night. Well, that's part of the uh, camping experience on the river, right? Yeah, that is the river life, I guess. There you guys go. Well, that's kind of cool. I mean, I'm glad that you said you're going to do it again. I, I, I hope I can do it one time I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it this year. We'll have to see. Don't even have to camp. You just float. Yeah, not a bad do, idea. Do a yeah. day float. Possibly. I can look into that. I'll see the uh, the boss lets me to do something like that. But yeah, I think next time I want to I want to hit some log jams. We didn't do that yesterday. You guys see any at all? Yeah, there's there a few log jams. But, you know, neither of us had stuff to tie off to or, or any, like, stake out poles to stick into the, into the mud or whatever and just basically tie off either against a steep bank or a log jam and it was my first time i had you could put yourself in dicey situations if you're up against a log jam yeah, yeah. if you know what you're doing it's not that big of a deal but i don't know what i'm doing let me ask you because um you have the hobie and which is a pedal kayak did you use that at all or was no. it more manual no it was all it was all paddles <laughs> because well the river is sh- super shallow at points you know some areas we were basically the paddle just the paddle depth if if even that Jeez, yeah and uh i just didn't want my my drive to get banged up and you're just floating down the river anyways for sure but uh i gotta say man that outback sucks to paddle the outback oh you the mean you're the hobie yeah, outback hobie. so uh do you miss uh paddling manually or do you like nope i prefer the pedal well, obviously, I prefer the pedals, but I think on the river, there's a lot of risk. For sure, because <laughs> there's logs just sticking up underneath. Uh, if you don't, if you're not paying attention, you're gonna hit those logs. Yeah, Mark, you got a kayak. You gonna do the river or what? I've honestly, like a couple years back, I've always wanted to drift down the river, and nobody was down to do it with me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever asked you, but I know for sure I've asked a group of my friends. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go do it, let's go do it. And then when it comes to it, oh, man, we're busy, this and that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's been something that I've really wanted to do, you know, not, not necessarily fishing, but just drifting down, drinking, hanging out, having a good time. I'm just afraid. But I've never done it yet. I'm just afraid because, you know, I'm, I'm clumsy as hell already. That's why I don't drink when I kayak. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I tell anybody that after I kayak, then obviously I'll have a couple of drinks. But I just don't trust myself when I'm drinking and kayaking, obviously. But... Yeah, I'm, there's a portion right near my house here. If you guys are ever interested, I know because I actually looked at where it goes. It's a really cool spot, then, and I think there's good potential. Because shout out to Spencer, he told me there's a, some really good spots around this neck of the woods, and if we launch from a certain spot, I think. I, I can ask him, and you know he can recommend us certain spots that are high potential for flatheads, channels, and all wipers. If we're interested to float down for about, I think he said about a mile or two, an hour or two, a mile or two, a like, mile or yeah, two, distance wise. He said, "Oh, okay, yeah." Because he said it's not too bad. I looked at the stretch um, south of there, and it's like fourteen miles. Sheesh. And well, you got to think, let's say you, you're floating two miles an hour. It's going to take seven. That's a seven-hour float. Yeah. Do you ever go back against the current at all for any reason? Um, we we did a little bit because we passed up a spot. And then uh, the next the next corner we got to, was like, oh, let's go back and check out the other spot. It was a pain in the ass paddling up See, there. That's what I was, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And that's why I say paddling my kayak was a pain in the ass because it sits super high. And if there's any breeze at all, it's it's turning me. I was constantly being spun around. Like going straight was annoying, and with all the different currents in the river, I was constantly fighting, trying just trying to go straight. So, would you recommend a different kayak? Obviously, then when you is there a, a specific like your old kayak? Would that have been better um, on the river? You think? Uh, oh yeah, maybe it's just it just turns fa- faster. Gotcha, but. Yeah, I don't know. You you don't see a lot of Hobies out on a yeah. <laughs> relatively small river. It's one of our bigger rivers, but 
yeah. I think in the grand scheme of things, that river is pretty small. And, uh, well, a lot of Hobie guys don't even want to get fish slamming blood on their <laughs> kayak, so they're they're probably not going to be on a small river. So you're saying Hobie kayakers are bougie? Some of them. <laughs> some of them are. <clears throat> Matt. Because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm in the Hobie groups and stuff, and people, you know, those those are boat deck things with that like the foam that they put on top yeah yeah of yeah, the yeah. of the of their boats on the deck so that's a thing for hobies too I mean, it looks cool it looks cool but i think that's a little over the top and then people are always posting like oh how do you clean off the <laughs> fish slime and blood and it's just like are you gonna fish out of it or what like <laughs> who cares <laughs> i i mean I, I you're right though i i don't think many hobie owners kayak rivers right but you know i'm not saying hobie hobie owners don't go fishing or scared to get their kayaks there but there's a few there's a <laughs> few out there for sure man um i did all right this morning this is uh i went out this morning to fish uh by myself I and mean, i went to uh a, a reservoir that was it's kind of close to the house here about maybe half, eh, 45 minutes or so away i really went expecting to catch shit because i haven't caught anything at this specific reservoir in about a year like anything of a year no way yeah like a decent catch okay and this was the first time in about a year like that i had, it was a constant catch this morning it was literally every cast. Now, don't get me wrong. It was it was white bass, and it was, man, I love white bass. I don't care what anybody says. I love the way they fight. I love everything about them. They're just fun, they're aggressive, and they, you know what I'm saying? They're and they're plentiful, so that's why I love them. So an idiot who doesn't fish very well. So perfect. Oh, for me. I think they're pretty awesome. They're fun to catch. They weren't the biggest, but boy, man, when you get constant action of you know little one pounders. All day, all morning. I was all, I was there all morning. I, I couldn't complain at all. And then, all right, so I, I, I got to give props to, you know, Fishing Kit today. So, because the reason why, because, you know, I the reason why I went there today was because I looked at the wind beforehand. And I knew it was kind of blown. It was wind blown in. And then I went there, like, I almost didn't take my catfish rods. Because I was like, hey, you know what, I'm just going to go for some fish with stripes. Maybe whatever, whatever, maybe crappies here and there, just in case. But I like, you know what, I'll just take my um, catfish rod just in case. So the very first fish I caught was a super tiny white bass. I'm like, all right, I brought my catfish rod, right? I mm -hmm. might as well. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, I might as well. And you guys will probably see it on the video. I don't know when I'll release it. But um, I obviously cut the head, and that's what they were biting on. Calf I, caught an, I, I caught a pretty nice maybe like a f three three four pound and three pounder i would say good eater fish great eater and it was one of those i just casted it out windblown side and it freaking worked i missed another bite a big bite because i turned around and i saw and i was like oh i just totally missed it no but, clicker huh do you have your clicker on? i had the clicker on but it was so windy oh. it was so windy that i couldn't hear and I, I'm hoping, I don't know, I haven't even edited the video yet, so we'll see how the audio is. I had my mic and everything, I had the fuzzy thing, but it was so windy, so I don't even know if, I hope I don't have to freaking voice over it. If I do, sorry about that, but I'm not going to let uh, a day that I actually caught fish go to waste. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was struggling, I've, I've been struggling, and... Um, it was it was nice, man. It was nice to catch fish today. It was. It I've been was, I've been on the struggle bus for a yeah, while too. What, what have you been going after, and how is fishing for you, Mark? Me, I you know, the guys who know me, I like to go for fish that I actually eat. So you know, I go Makes for sense. crappie, catfish. Rarely will I eat white bass because I I'm just not a big white bass fan because mm -hmm. if I feel like if it keeps over a day, then the meat kind of doesn't taste good to me so uh yeah i just go out with the thoughts of crappie and catfish for one um my last good day i had i probably caught like i want to say six cats out at the same reservoir you were at but you know different location mm -hmm. um that's probably my go-to spot just to go hang out and do whatever i mean i don't really just chase 
fishing for the game of it or the sport of it like you know you guys do but you consume it i do i do there you go yeah all right I'm so cool I'm, I'm out there for number one just to catch fish that i will eat so what'd yeah you, but what'd you use for those catfish i'm just curious um you see you caught like six of them we use the white bass meat ah, that's what i use today yeah we uh you know we just went there just no expectations to catch fish just went out there just had a good time just brought my camping grill we usually just hang out chill drink fish you know all the good stuff and you know we buddy of mine caught uh white bass so we chopped it up and it worked what did they say use i think because i've been seeing more and more people keep asking you know what's the best bait for catfish and i can remember pretty much what you guys always say i think kit even spencer even david david weiner weiner is it weiner or weiner. weiner weiner um use whatever they're eating at their location so use the forage whatever they're they're eating on he they always say that's the best bait and that's what i used this morning and it, it seemed like it, it worked yeah in iowa you can you can legally use any fish that you uh legally harvested so if you could take it home to eat mm -hmm. you can use it as bait you know that those two are the same thing in in our rule book pretty much you know i will take that back um those catfish that I caught, I did catch them better on um, a sh piece of shad that I actually caught. They were, they would hit every like 15 to 20 minutes on the white bass meat, but there was uh, some shad that had washed up because probably the white bass were foraging or whatever. Yeah, we chopped those up and it would be every five minutes, but five it, to ten minutes. It's that, still it's still the same concept because that's what they're eating yeah, there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. They can't catch the shad; they'll go catch the white bass or something. Yeah. I. You know, I I used to always think like, oh, chicken liver. I used to always think, you know, what what else did I say? Worms are the stinkiest shit. Um, and I probably have used it maybe a couple of years ago and really had no luck. Actually, might like been like ten years ago, ten to between 10, eight to ten years ago. I, that's because that's all I've known. I wasn't into fishing, and then I wasn't into cat fishing. So I was just like everybody says, yeah, chicken liver, chicken liver, and the stank, the stinkiest shit that you can get. I'm like, all right. Yeah, yeah growing growing up, I probably used from everything from A to Z, like stink bait, worms, uh, chicken liver. Then we steadily moved up to like shad guts, and then actually using the whole shad, cut bait, yep. cut shad, yep. and anything that they actually eat. I yep. think I get more. I feel like I get more whether more action or more bites obviously it just makes sense now see the last time i used chicken liver <laughs> i was probably man i don't even know if, it, if i was out of high school yet but uh, i'll let you guys guess on how long ago that was but uh the container spilt in my <laughs> trunk and it was middle of summer chicken liver and that shit stank for like over a week straight had to drive with my head outside the window for a week straight, and that was the last time I ever used chicken liver yeah. made for catfish. And how the hell do you guys even keep chicken liver on your hooks? That uh, was like the worst. You gotta, yeah, you, you got to use a little bit of piece of the outside skin where it's a little bit tougher. Of you the know, liver? Yeah, because liver if, has skin? Well, it's, it's I wouldn't say skin, but like a film. Okay. So it's it's a little bit more tougher, and you can actually hook it. But I've I've heard people using like pantyhose, wrapping it up in pantyhose and using that. Yeah, I guess. And you know all sorts of things. I, you could even like let it sit out in the sun for a little bit and let it harden up a little bit. But yeah, people put like salt and garlic powder, try to basically cure it so it stiffens it up. Flavor okay. it. Yeah. Flavor. Jeez. <laughs> But I don't know. I always say, like, is that for the catfish or for us to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I always say, use whatever is swimming in that water. That I, is the best bait. And I remember you guys, and then you know, it's kind of funny. Ever since I started doing the podcast and just really started really fishing a lot more in the past, I would say, like I said, in the past ten ten plus years, um, everybody who fishes for catfish that I know that catches, you know, that does really well. They always say use whatever they're eating, feeding on cut bait. That's pretty much, I've, that's what I've heard. Like, and then we can go to, like I said, you can go out to those little Facebook groups and P 
people always have their specific things. It's kind of weird. It's kind of there's unique. a lot of co- homemade concoctions. Yes, that's that's the word I was looking for. The homemade concoction. I was like some Kool Aid and all this stuff. I'm like sheesh, Kool Aid, Jello, mm. garlic chicken, yeah. or hot dogs, or yeah. I see people posting chicken feed. Like, do these work? I'm like, man, <laughs> throw them on the grill. I'll eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say to each their own, man. Whatever works for you, you sure. know, go do it. You're yeah. catching fish on whatever, you know. It's do what do what catches you fish. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Um, so we have kayak fishing. I, I kind of want to ask because I almost I almost purchased this kayak, uh, but I know Mark, you you got the um, is it the Old Town? Which one do you got? Old, the Old Town, Town PDL. So I almost purchased that. But what do you think of it? In case for you know people who are looking to to purchase a kayak uh, a lot of people obviously knows that he has a hobie and i just want to know what what your thoughts are in regards to that because i almost purchased the uh the old town too also but i'm just what, well, what are your thoughts on it what's your review and i oh i love it um it has a propeller drive instead of those flippers or whatever that the hobies have mm-hmm. and one of the biggest differences is that you don't have to flip switches to go forward and back you yeah. can basically it's like a pedaling a bicycle basically. instant reverse yep yep there you go instant reverse and um I, I don't know the specifics of the specs or anything but it's light enough to carry around it's you know yours is a 12 foot right 12 10 10 no no, no it is oh, a 12. 12 it is a 12 yeah, yeah I think it's a 12. that's what i'm gonna say yeah i'm like on my kayak it's really big, guys. You, did you take it out? Were you I took it, to out. take it out yesterday? I, I just, no, I, I was going to take it out yesterday, but it was too damn hot, dude. You're crazy. Yeah. That's why mm-hmm. I'm like, you were crazy taking it out yesterday. You, you seen that meme where it's a Brad Pitt? He's like a gladiator or something. <laughs> Probably from Troy or something. <laughs> yeah, oh. or Troy. Yeah. And then, you know, the quote, the quote is like, this is why no one will remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> I'll have to, hey, I think I'm editing this one, so I'll, I'll throw that up there. Like, oh. oh, it's too hot to go fishing, and then it'll, I'll, put that, I'll put that meme up. This is Guys, why no one will remember uh, your name. The weather yesterday, if you're listening to this, that shit was 100 and plus degrees yesterday. Plus, it was plus humidity. Plus humidity. It Heat was index, disgusting. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. I am old enough to realize I can wait till tomorrow, or I can wait till next week. I don't have to force it. I, hey, I'm, I'm I'm proud enough to know that it's okay. I can wait a little bit. It was freaking hot, dude. I was like, I know, I was out there. I was. That's why I said props to you, man. I was like, yeah, dude. My wife gave me the. She goes, "Are you stupid or are you stupid to even <laughs> consider taking the kayak?" That's what she said to me. I go, "Well, kids out there." That's what I said. She goes, "Well, is he gonna fall off a bridge? Are you gonna go follow him too?" And she said one of those things, you know, jump off a bridge. Sorry, and I was just like. No, but you know he's out there and he's fishing. And she goes, "Dude, you're no." <laughs> I'm like, all right. But so she told you no. No. I, 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 let's just say this: she may have said like, "You're an idiot." She didn't say no, and I was just like, all right, well, I, I can understand where you're coming from." Ne- next time she says that, well, nobody's gonna remember my name. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm use that line. Oh, that's too funny. But yeah, my kayak is way too big. I'm. I'm I, it was I, a tandem, right? I keep, yeah, I keep contemplating because it's like it's a little bit over four, almost fourteen feet. Damn, um, yeah. and it's heavy. I, I do. I'm at the, and I'm getting a little older. I'm contemplating it, guys. I'm contemplating a boat. Do it. I've been saying it for like it's, ever. It's, Cause you know, it makes sense for you. Cause we, because yeah. so before we even jumped on today, I was talking to to Mark, and we're just like, man, I'm getting to an age where it's just heavy. Oh yeah, I'm, and I'm actually sore from. Still two weeks ago. By the time I get it on the water and I'm starting to pedal, I'm just like, whew, I'm beat. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, I'm not in the greatest shape. I mean, I try to be. I, I work out, but golly, I'm just old. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm like, and it's heavy as shit. It's a tandem one. I think my other Kai, the older Kai, I think uh, it was more feasible. It's like a little bit over 12 feet. But I guess that additional, it's probably like an additional, I want to say 15 pounds heavier, 15 to 20 pounds. It makes a big difference. Well, my Outback, it's not exactly a light kayak, and that thing loaded up yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, that thing is heavy, and that's, you know, it's even smaller than your kayak. That's, yeah, same as mine. Yeah. Fully loaded. It's, it's, yeah, a hassle getting up and from the water. 
All right. Got to find a better way to do it. We'll come back here in a second because I heard Fishing Kit's beard just went clink, clink, clink. So that means it's empty. It's a little empty. So he's empty. So we got to refill him up. And then um, we'll continue the conversation because uh, I do want to talk to this, this guy right here a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but we have Garmin's. I want to hear from the Hummingbird fan or not fan, but at least the owner and see the biggest difference in pros and cons and stuff. So. We'll be right back. Let's go refill. Thank you for joining us at uh, Beer Fish Fanatics. And this episode is actually brought to you by Whisker Seeker Tackle. So make sure you guys go to whiskerseeker.com for all your catfishing gear. Enjoy the episode, guys. Hey, um, why don't you show everybody your toes real quick? <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody, um, we're back. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, my toes. All right. So, I. <clears throat> Whether I show you guys or not, my toes were nicely painted recently by my daughters. I have four daughters. By his daughters. By my daughters. So I have per four daughters. Per your request or what? Wow. <laughs> no, not per my request. I was taking a nap, and then they just decided, like, hey, daddy's feet need some color. So there you go. That's oh, what happens that's when you it, have daughters, huh? guys. That's it, huh? That's it. I mean, it's not, it's not like I didn't request it, so that's what it is. I think you sure. enjoy it. Here we go again. <laughs> um quick shout out to uh boulevard brewing company i'm drinking the gordo so uh, if you guys don't know by now i'm asking my nickname gordo so i figured i'm gonna grab a bunch of these because you guys are drinking my juice <laughs> not Cheers. not not me yet <laughs> save it save it shit. for the last oh get away, get away. this is not Ooh. bad see it's a good beer oh that's a penalty Mm. All right, so spilling your juice. Oh, he's spilling my juice. That's awesome. Um, I still owe him a slam of beer. He did reach the 2000k for a fishing kit. Um, I will honor that. Don't oh, worry. Thank you. Thank you. Good I'll job. Great job. Beer. But you guys got to make this cat. It's almost been a year now. He still owes me two slams. We talk about this like over and over on, on the pod. You gotta refresh my memory oh, for my what goodness. now? For all the fish that we've, you know, we, we put some bets here and there that, you know, very rare that I win. And there was uh, two beers that you were still two, two. I think two slam. I, I think some interest need to be collected yeah, too. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm with it's, you. I have a hard time believing you caught more fish than me two yeah, times. Me too, but no, no, no. It, was, <laughs> it, it was one of those that I don't think I caught more fish than him. It was one of those I caught a first fish. Before oh, him. first mm. fish. Yeah. So it's man, one of drums don't count, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they count? We got to get rid of this rule. <laughs> drums freaking count, guys. It's a freaking freshwater fish. It counts. <laughs> I, I think for yeah. bets like that, a keeper. I is keep what, a drum. I'm keeping a drum from now on, all the damn time, dude. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind keeping a drum. It, it ain't that bad. There you go. The smaller one, I'd say, a couple pounds. I'd I'd keep those. But. Yeah, but but those couple pounds, do they even actually have any meat on them? Nah. They're like all all bones and all head. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're not that bony. It's just more, yeah, they just got a big head. It's yeah. like a head and a tail. It's yeah, a so, tail. so there's right. barely any meat, even if it's like a three pound drum, right? Yeah. That's true. Because the one I kept was probably a couple pounds. That was enough just for me. But it's all the head. Yes. All head. All head. <laughs> head is good. We like it. But I want to try to make a <laughs> chowder. Chowder. Oh, okay. Yeah. That yeah. That's how. Yeah, yeah you were right. saying that. Even next one. I gotta do it this winter or this fall when it's a little bit cooler. Yeah. It's kind of hot yeah. for a chowder. I mean, I guess I could still make it. There's. I think, I think I gotta steal your idea. I might have to try that. See, Mark's uh, Mark's kind of a chowder guy. He's kind of known for a chowder. I love chowder. So since it's uh, since it's kind of like shrimpy in texture, you know, kind of yeah, very yeah. rubbery. Yeah, it can it can be rubbery. That's why I would only keep like a two pounder or whatever. Like a couple two pounders, throw like cube them up, mm-hmm. and I throw them in a chowder. I think it'd be good, but I don't know how to make chowders, so maybe I'll catch it and then Mark can cook it. <laughs> there we go. What's the best way? Okay, we should ask every guest this. So, or Mark, what is your favorite way to eat fish, and why? Oh man. Oh, yeah, I was gonna ask you that because you you know you're you were saying that you you fish to to, to eat. eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for crappie, the, my favorite way to eat crappie is probably just deep frying it. The uh, whole, whole The whole thing. thing. Okay. I, what I'll do is I'll, me personally, I mean, I know in the Asian community, like, especially the older guys, 
they the just OGs. they just freaking salt pepper and then cook it guts and all guts and all <laughs> scales and all too guts because, scales because, everything you know honestly like with the scale on if you cook it that way it's easier to peel back the skin <laughs> okay yeah no, peel it right. back you're, you're right actually it is it I, is I, I think you're right because i mean they don't eat the scale so but yeah. they cook it right on but it. it's easier to peel back i think you're right on that so you get to the flesh and more of the meat you know what i mean but but for me i like to scale it i like to gut it uh marinate it with whatever um you just be simple as salt and pepper or whatever and then you just eat it like that um you, do you batter it or you just fry it whole? just just fry it just salt pepper and then just fry it whole Okay. Um, and that way I just... You eat it alone or do you eat it with sticky rice? I eat it with sticky rice. Of course, man. <laughs> sticky, rice is a, sticky rice is my thing. See, all right, listeners, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> you guys got to get on the sticky rice band. But but me personally, I'm, I'm one of those rare guys that actually prefer more rice to meat ratio, where some people, they like more meat to the rice ratio. Rice is basically, a, you know, a filler. Kind of yeah. like when you eat, you know, steak with potatoes or something like that. You know what I mean? For sure. So it's a starch. Yeah, it's for me though. I I like more rice to my meat ratio. Definitely. But yeah, um, that's that's the way I prefer to cook my crappie. How about catfish? Since you said that was the other one that you like. Catfish, at. my favorite is to cut them into steaks, and then to. Uh, stew not not stew but like maybe a saute them with tomato and then the tomatoes were actually created like a man i don't i don't i don't know these terminologies for the cooking like a way. sauce yes Gla- glaze not a glaze but more like a i don't know how to uh, i would say sauce because yeah. it gets saucy yeah because well, it's fat because because catfish is hella fat yeah you basically saute the tomatoes with butter and uh garlic and all this stuff and you render it down and it becomes like a sauce almost like the process of making uh spaghetti sauce right yeah yeah, yeah. and then you know you you throw the catfish in there and then saute it up mm. in there did you eat it that with jasmine rice or sticky rice uh you can do both but i would prefer that with uh steamed rice with jasmine, jasmine rice, rice that you were saying yeah 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 because yep. you pour that sauce yeah. over the rice so good Dang, you get me hungry. Yeah, I'm gonna lie. I'm like, I'm actually, I'm I'm actually, actually like, shit yeah, right lip, yeah, licking my lips because you guys probably good. had it. You guys probably had it yeah, before. I, yeah, I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, Damn. Cat, that's my favorite catfish or uh, dish to cook with catfish. Do you know how to make it? I know. Uh, <laughs> got a catfish. I, just, I, think, I think I do actually. It's I, it's pretty simple. Like I said, it just, you just first you uh, sear the catfish and cook it right, and then you take it out, and then you throw the tomatoes in, and then you render it down. Yeah. And then you just add the catfish back in with the juices and all that stuff. And then, yeah. Is it pretty easy? I think it's pretty easy. I have a catfish I caught this morning. <laughs> if, I, well, if, I, if I take the... Well, part two, guys. Yeah, that's what this. I'm saying. If I, we do this like a part two, yeah. we can, we can, we can technically make a video out of it. And, uh, interesting. Yeah. Hey, all our mics are on, right? I hope so. Was yours on? Yeah, it's on. Oh, My, okay. Mine's on. Okay. I, I just so. looked. I was like, "Huh? I wonder if we everybody turned on their mics." <laughs> that means that we're gonna have voiceover. Some, yeah, voiceover. <laughs> voice this over. is what he's saying, and <laughs> yeah. is what it is. Yeah. All right, and that actually got me hungry. I ain't gonna mm-hmm. lie. I was like, mm, "That I I haven't had catfish that way in a very long time." Yeah. We'll it's we'll have to we'll have to make another video of these two dishes here. Might have to yeah. for sure. For Do sure. it on your. Uh... The catfish is basic, but the the cat or I mean the crappie is basic. Well, you know what we can do is um, we can do like a little. In the next couple of weeks, maybe we go out all together. We go catfishing together, mm-hmm. and then we can make a little catch and cook all together or something like that. You know what That'd I want to nice. do? Uh, crappie on a half shell. On a what? Basically, you just fillet the crappie, leave the scales on one side, mm-hmm. you throw it on the grill. But my twist would be to drizzle gel on it while Ooh. it's cooking. While hmm. it's cooking? I think, yeah. So it would be makes- like caramelized because there's a lot of sugar, in, or at least in the gel that I make. Which is a spicy sauce, by the way. Jiao, 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 spicy. It's like a, what's a translation of jiao? It's just spicy sauce? Pepper sauce. Pepper it's sauce. Just, yeah. It's just sauce, I just think. just sauce. Yeah. It could be, there's different, way different types of jails. But, you know, I since you brought up your jail thing, I'm going to say I'm not a fan of your uh, scorpion. Oh, jail. scorpion yeah. pepper <laughs> You're jail. not a fan it's, of it? It's, it's not because it's spicy. No, it's just the taste of it. Like. Oh. Well, when we went camping that one year for my birthday, 
it was it's too floral for me. Like the taste of it is what a hater. I'm, no, I'm not hating. <laughs> Why are you hating, man? It's not Why hating. Why you hating, Mark? No, but because if he if he makes the same gel with a different type of uh, pepper, uh-huh. no, I, I love it. Like okay. uh, so, it's the pepper. Regular Thai chilies, regular like habaneros, or maybe even jalapenos. What pepper do you use on that? Scorpion. Scorpion. And you don't like it? I don't like it. Is it, it, it fruity? Or? No. I've never had scorpion. Like I said, floral. It has a floral, floral taste. Right. Yeah. yeah. The scorpion pepper is pretty aromatic. Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. But I'm not a fan. Well, normally I just do Thai peppers. Yeah. That's the original. Maybe you should do with can't, Thai peppers then next Can't time. beat we'll the original. Yeah, I mean, I normally make it with Thai pepper, but I just oh. had scorpion pepper. Like, you know oh. what? I'm going to try it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I see. I see. Yeah, I think, you know... Like I said, crappie on a half shell. Just flay it in half, leave the scales on, and then just do scale side down on a grill and just drizzle. That sounds gel damn on good. It. Try, yeah. Let me do it, man. Let me well, do it. let's do this. Man, well, we talked about we were in a chat, and you talked about having this chat outing. Let's make it happen. Chat outing. Yeah, the the a little get together. Yeah, the the get jiggy with it. Oh. Yeah. Remember you you met you're the one that mentioned no, it. Why do I have to be the one who sets it up? All because time? you you're the guy that makes it happen. Dude, I'm so busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's why it's better for you to make it you because know? we Jeez. we got to go off your yeah, no, we gotta go off your schedule. schedule. No, because if you guys set something up, then I'd be like, honey, I have to because everybody says this day. Well, I can see your side of the bit, but you know. But if I set it up, then I won't have time to set it up. That's my thing. Let's do this. It's we'll hard. we'll All do right. this. Sometime. All right, we'll, we'll we'll set something up. Maybe we'll set something up. One of those the chat outing, and then uh, we got to do um this year, dude. Before the end of the year, kid, we we definitely got to do a BFF cleanup somewhere again. Oh yeah. We should set, we'll, we'll set something up for for our listeners and our followers. Let's let's not use a faulty app. Faulty app. <laughs> oh yeah, for any giveaways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, see, like Mark. Mark has a ring. Jay's like, no, no, but it didn't even say that. It was still on my name. It was not. Then, then the dude's name came up, and then it switched over on the on the picture. It was pointing at your name, and then when the thing came out, it was the guy's name, and then it clicked over to the next. So what a heartbreak. So for our listeners, you probably don't know. Actually, I I have a video on it on my pop fishing, but. Uh, what we did was we, we, there was a random giveaway at the end. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Whisker Seeker. That hella we had hella giveaways, yeah. and um, this guy almost won a rod, almost, almost. because we <laughs> used f- fishing, maybe fishing kit was well, he used a specific app. It's not fishing kit's fault. It's nobody's fault. He was using the app, and then it I'll spun, spun, kit. and it stopped on at the very end. You know, it, it was one of those wheel it was random like generators, a randomizer, yeah. and it's basically like it's a, a wheel of fortune. Yes, yeah, so I was about to say that. Yep. And it, it landed on Mark's name, but then it said somebody else's name, and then all of a sudden it clicked over. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. we can. We, I, I will. Mean, I will blame Fishing Kit because he freaking announced my name. <laughs> he well, yeah. He was like, Mark. Your name, Mark. I was like You're all like, extra happy, and I was like all the way down there already. <laughs> then he was like, Nope, psych. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even like trying to mess with Mark. I just. I was just going off of what I saw. <laughs> I thought he was messing with Bart, but, oh, it, but then I saw it. I was like, oh, shit, that was it, it was just the the random generator. It's, I guess it was a app issue. I don't know. It was funny. Yeah. But it wasn't that funny. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Did you think it was funny, Kit? I thought it was a little funny. I thought it was pretty funny. There we go. Who thought it was yeah. funny? Sorry, man. But uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'll talk to Fishing Kit, and we'll, we'll set that down. It was super fun, and we'll talk to our sponsors because um, they, they really donated a lot of stuff last year. So yeah. it was really cool. And then we, we got to find a spot. I, I was talking to Kit. I think we're going to find a spot maybe this year that it's that needs the help because, you know, Big Creek, shout out to them. They really keep their spots yeah, really They really do. Pretty damn clean. Um, it's and a we, state park, that's state, why. Yeah, and, and even on top of that, even as clean as they kept it, it still needed our help. Yeah, yeah. and to, to a certain extent. But, yeah. but there's going to be other locations. We're gonna we're gonna set something up for sure at the towards the. We'll probably do it towards the fall, and the reason being because that shit's hot as hell right now still. Um, so we, I, I don't want there anybody to be out there blazing heat trying to collect trash. That sucks. So we'll we'll set something up. Um, just stay tuned to us. It'll be fun. We'll we'll, we'll definitely have some giveaways. Some some food like we did last year that was awesome shout out to like i said whisker seeker for setting that up um should be fun man well and then this time we'll, we'll use a better app to give away besides the one that <laughs> that that didn't work too well for maybe 
people can dr- write their names on a piece of paper, old school style. Yes. And just pull it out. Yes. <laughs> Son of a gun. Simple as that. I love it. Well, we'll definitely do that. Maybe we'll have we'll have one of the kids do it. Maybe we'll have one of the kids draw the name out. So then can't get mad when the kids pull the name. <laughs> so everybody was wondering, why, why do you have your daughters pull the random shit? Because then you can't get mad because that's just, the kids are random, dude. It's not, it's not like, you know what I mean? So that'll be fun. We'll definitely do that. Raffle tickets or something. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Raffle tickets and whatnot. Um, as uh, I was mentioning earlier, I, I do want to get your your information in regards to the Hummingbird 360. Sorry, we're just changing because I'm just going back because that was kind of – Something I, I, I want to know firsthand experience because everyone that we've had on has live scope. Everybody knows about Garmin live scope. Everybody knows Garmin live scope is probably, if not the forefront of yeah. all fishing technology in a way. Right. Yeah, as far as the live imaging. Yeah. Goes. yeah. So we have our buddy here, Mark, and he has the Hummingbird 360, which is I would say is probably the biggest competitor slash yeah. alternative to the the live scope would you say no it's not, not, not the, live scope. the same thing the uh the 360 is the different one it's basically uh like it says 360 sonar so you're looking at around you okay. their uh i forget what the name is their their version of the live scope is i think the man i forget active something, something like that active mega live mega yeah there you go yeah, yeah it is mega live you're correct so what's the biggest difference between the mega live 360 well mega live, live is basically hummingbird's version of live scope live scope okay. so yeah. you're seeing it in real time or quote unquote real time but the 360 is just basically a sonar that goes around you in a, in a 360 motion it's basically side scan but it's in a 360 yeah. is what it is yep so what are your th- thoughts in regards to using that on the ice and on your because you have your yeah. kayak so yeah i initially bought it for ice fishing um and i just bought it this year which I, I find it great i i don't have it really dialed into the specifics or whatever that would be the better uh settings or whatever i don't think so but from using it on the ice i only used it like maybe four or five times on the ice and it was great i mean uh of course like I didn't get it really, quote unquote, dialed in until like my third time out, but it was uh, marking fish that was, you know, a couple feet away, and then we would move over, and you know, sure enough, they would be there. Um, but I have only just implemented it onto my kayak, and you know, I was kind of scared that the rod itself would wiggle a lot, or you know, I just wouldn't get a lot of good feedback from it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my first time out, it was just a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, honestly, it was pretty quite surprising how uh, s- the setup that I have, it was pretty sturdy and all that stuff. So can you explain the 360? OK, so you said how what's the degree angle and all that crap of the 360? I'll, I'll give you a hint. OK, it, uh, it it's in the name. How many <laughs> degrees it is? 360. 360. So it goes <laughs> okay. all around you. <laughs> no, I. It, it, it honestly, it no. just it just depends on how you dial it in. It I, can be it can be from anywhere from 15 feet okay. to 100 feet. But from what I've seen online and from what I've read, the the better uh, use it is is probably within 20 feet of water and about no more than 60 feet. 60 it, feet. Yeah, because uh, 60 feet e- either way, because it. Okay. If, if you go deeper or you go wider, it'll start getting washing out and it doesn't pick up that good of uh, feedback. Okay. How's the lag on? Is it real time? Is It, it, just, it just depends on uh, how fast you have the, uh, uh, the unit going. Mm-hmm. Like right now, I have it set at the speed of three, which is pretty slow. But the, uh, like I said, the feedback would be more, much more clear and crisp. Whereas if you if you're trying to if you're searching for fish, you want to set it up to you know a little higher. I think it goes up to like ten, but it'll sweep faster, but it'll tend to wash out more, so you won't get a more like a clear uh, feedback of what you're getting, or what the unit is seeing. It's not live. It's not <laughs> live. It's not live. Just picture. Um, I don't have it, but I. I, I always look at this stuff, but just picture like in a movie when 
they're like in some military thing or like on a battleship or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The radar, you know, the thing that spins. Okay. And then every time it goes around, you know, the stuff like moves. a submarine. Yep. Yeah, like we see submarine. in the submarine. Okay. Yeah. So when the stuff, yep. you know, like it was, basically it sweeps. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So Doot. then the stuff will move with every time it goes around. It's, it's okay. basically and that. It hits it. It, it won't yep. beep and all that stuff, but you will see the dots. Yeah. Of the that's fish. basically how it works. Yeah. Uh, yep. That is the uh, layman's version i guess for yeah. someone like me thanks yeah. I'm, no, just, that, that helps. Of, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't don't yeah, know i didn't know that's what i'm yeah. saying mark's the only person that i've even heard of putting it on a kayak i know people would use it for ice fishing and obviously people use it on boats but i haven't heard of anyone putting it on a kayak when you were using it on a kayak do you think it was beneficial or i mean what do you what were your what's your review on it for just couple, first time uh, for the first time like i said i don't have really have it dialed in yet i was just more testing it out if my wiring was right if you know that mm -hmm. that sort of thing but um as far as side imaging you know you got that or whatever and that's basically what it act as but you also see what's in front of you and what's back because of course it's 360. Mm -hmm. so if if i would have missed something that the side imaging would have missed like if i'm going straight forward and all that stuff um it'll catch it or i will see like what's in front of me and do I want to go this way or do I want to go to the right or left? You know, it, it has its own benefits, but um, right now I, I just have to, you know, go out and do it more. Um, for sure. Of course, it was just my first time. Because like I said, I just recently bought it with, for the ice fishing season. Uh, first time implementing it on kayak and only used it once. So what would you guys say? Both. I'm just a question for you two. What, what would be the pro of the 360 versus live scope like what what's your the biggest pro to get that versus the live scope or is it even do you think um i'll let you go first and i'll let you go because you're ready i don't i don't know if look they, like you're about to pounce on me <laughs> there i think the bear is hitting me <laughs> the, the pros honestly i think they they got their own pros and cons but the pros i think instead of having to manually sweep with the with the live, the three sixty will do it for you. You know what I mean. You don't have to really move. Don't move anything. Yeah. Okay. So the live scope, if you kind of gotta inch it and inch it and inch it, because from what I've seen, when when we go fishing with your live scope on the mm. ice, you know what I mean. But uh, because you're just letting the radar yeah. do its thing for yep. three sixty. And yeah. so, what would you say is like, nah, man, live scope beats it in that sense. It's live. Yeah, the live real that's, time. That's what real I would time. say. Live yeah, scope. Live time. scope is actually yeah pretty pretty fast on the, not even on the lag if if you would say, but yeah they're pretty quick. So how's the I, I don't know if you guys have used the mega yet. How's the mega versus the live scope? You know since supposedly that's mega live. Real time. Yeah, yeah, that's I've never that's real time, it. right? I've never. I don't know it. anybody that has it. Yeah, that's it's basically hummingbird's version of live scope. Yep, mega yeah. live. But from what I've read on online and reviews, the lot or the live scope is actually a lot faster and more crisp still well, lag. regular live scope a lot of people would say was already better and then they came out with live scope plus and now they got the there's another one too is the lvs 62 or something yeah it's saw that. for like 300 300 feet range but the trans just the transducer is like 2400 bucks Ooh. and i think you still need the black box which is like 800 bucks or something so how much is the uh 360 uh, the 360 that I bought was the Ultrix one, uh -huh. which is, I think, 48 feet. I don't know for sure, but that one was 12, I believe, that I bought it for. 400? Yeah. And, you know, anybody that knows or is look in the market right now, they're pretty tough to come by right now. Hmm. So it the from when I bought it anyways, their their prices might have skyrocketed. So. Gotcha. Well, I think it... Um... And then, of course, you would also need... Uh, units with mega plus capabilities. We might have to see if I can reach out to like Hummingbird. See if we can get. I, I just I'm just curious what their thoughts are or their where they're looking to do. Are they looking to differentiate from what Live Scope's doing in a sense, or what are they looking to do? Um, I mean, we we had what's his name from Garmin on. Um, it was kind of cool to ha to hear what their thoughts and their viewpoints are. So I'd like to hear, like, not just Hummingbird. I think the other, what's the other brands? Um, Lawrence. 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 And just kind of see what their mindset are. <laughs> are they just 
going on their own? Are they going with what, what the public is demanding? Are they going with what Garmin is doing? Because Garmin, in a way, like we all say, it's like the forefront. Everybody knows it. Yeah, I mean, it's because that's the hot thing right now, live imaging. So live imaging is probably the route. For now. Until something but. And like up. I was just telling you, man, don't the next thing is gonna be you're gonna wear glasses, man. That's your your freaking flasher, your fish finder, everything is gonna be in your glasses pretty soon. You're gonna wear sunglasses or regular glasses, and you're gonna be able to see pretty. I don't know how soon, but pretty damn soon. The way we adapt, or, you know, the way technology innovates, guarantee it's gonna happen within the next twenty years, if less. So I think we will see 360 live scope before we see that. That's so, probably that be, the next that would thing. Be crazy I, I think that's the next step, and then it'll be glasses. I think yeah. you're right. Well, because where the, uh, where the 360 doesn't need a sweep, it's just yeah. it's it's just next and step. you'll just see it moving out. They yeah. kind of already have that, but it's only mm-hmm. a certain range. Instead of being 360 degrees, it's like 90 degrees or something, and you point it around. Yeah. And you point it around. It's gonna be pricey. Yeah. No. Yeah. They're they're all pretty pricey now, in my opinion. I don't make yeah. that much money, but <laughs> shit, freaking these bass like tournament guys, they'll have like three sixty and live scope, and they'll have like three different units unless they're sponsored by Hummingbird or whatever. They'll they'll have like three sixty for the you know the side imaging and stuff, and then they'll have the live scope for the live imaging and then maybe they'll have low rants for the maps for sure like they'll have all three just you know what whichever one's the best at whatever then they'll just get that instead of having you know all all garment stuff because from what i hear hummingbird has the best side imaging and, and stuff and then obviously garmin a lot of people will say that has the best live imaging and uh, i guess maybe low rants maybe has the best mapping I think you might be right on that. So check out that uh, video by Jay Siemens. I think he, he did a great video on it. I, I, I got to go back and watch it. So yeah. shout out to Jay. Congratulations on the baby. It's been a while since I didn't even get a chance to say congratulations. I, I probably should send him a message. Sorry about that. Mm. But he, he did a great video on comparison of all of them, I think. Yeah. One of the videos. Pretty cool. Um. So before we wrap up today... I do want to um, bring this out because, you know, it's, this is like a, a crucial, super important thing that we had to talk about. Um, super important. But the Honda Ridgeline. So <laughs> so our friend here, our buddy right here, Mr. Mark. He's the Mark with the Ridgeline. He's the Mark with the, Mark with the Ridgeline. Mark yeah. with the Ridgeline, the brand new Honda Ridgeline. Yes. I know everybody's like, come on, y'all got to ask. So, all right. So he, he drove up here. It's a beautiful car. I mean, I. I, I, I might we might even post a little picture on this, all right? <laughs> we might post a little picture on the uh, on the thumbnail, kid. You, you might have to. Beautiful car, 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 truck. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm gonna ask the gentleman here. He he just bought the is it 2022? 2022. 2022 Damn, Honda fancy. Ridgeline. Now, do you think it's a truck? In your opinion, as the owner, I get it. You own it. And, and this is the thing. I love it. I love my original line. Don't get me wrong. But do you think the 2022 is a truck? Well, Ridge line. 2022 Ridge line, Honda Ridge line. For, you know, um, for beginners, I'm, I'm not a big car buff guy. I don't know specifics and all this stuff. But from what I've heard, it's not considered a real truck because of its <laughs> – Tolling capabilities, its chassis, et cetera, et cetera, right? But for what I would use it for is basically would be camping, would be fishing, and maybe hauling, like, the small stuff. Um, so for me, it is a truck because it has that bed. Does that bed make it a truck? Probably not. It's what whatever it's capable of doing, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't see myself in the near future now, like, hauling a boat or hauling anything bigger than that you know what i mean so, so you're more you're more you more categorizing category categorizing trucks of towing capability 
I, I wouldn't know what how to I would ca- categorize it honestly, but for what okay. it is sold as and what it is, you think it's, it's a truck? It's a truck. It's a utility vehicle. <laughs> utility vehicle with a truck a truck bed. Yeah, it's for utility. You know, you can yeah. use it for certain well, things. Well, basically what I just said. Then, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, so it's a utility vehicle with a truck bed. Basically, yes. uh, what I said, what I said myself was, yeah, <laughs> an SUV. It's basically an SUV with a truck bed because th- that fucker is smooth as fuck. <laughs> That's what I said. Yes. No, yeah, it's I, nice. Don't, don't hate nice. on it. Don't hate on I it. Hate it. Nice. I've never hated an original. I own an original. Not, I'm not saying you hate it, but yeah, you can't but hate on it unless you actually driven it. I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I said that in the previous podcast. It said SUV with the truck bed, and I yeah. told you that. So don't don't but. buy the Ridgeline expecting it to be like a full-on truck, like you're going to go off-roading and you're going to haul like some massive crap. It, that's not basically what it is or what I'm using it for, you know what I mean? What does body on frame do to a truck? Why, why does that the benefit of it? I'm asking you. You might know. I don't. Oh. <laughs> okay. I think it's just a stronger platform. Is that what it is? Okay. Technically, okay. Like strength-wise. But did you know? Because yours has all-wheel drive, right? Yep. Yeah. All-wheel drive. They do. It's kind of the, one of the higher trims. So I was reading that the well, Ridge. They, they all have all-wheel drive, yeah. actually. Do they? Yeah. No, no, sure? no, no, not, no. All, not all. Not the older Ridge lines. No, no. The, these new ones. These new Ridge lines. Yeah. I think my, you can get them front, front drive. wheel drive for no. like the lower trims, the even lower the new trims. ones. Are, are you, two are you even sure? the newer ones? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to so. look at that, but I think but, it, they're all all wheel drive. But I was reading, well, and then they'd all be classified this way. But I was reading that the the newer Ridge lines, the ones that have all wheel drive, uh, based on gross vehicle weight, is in the same class as a F one fifty. Yes, I read that also. A Tundra, a basically a half ton or a full size, whatever truck you want to try. Versus, I think. Uh, market wise, it's kind of going after Tacoma Ridge Line or not Ridge Line, Tacoma Ranger, gotcha. uh, Frontier. Even though it's it's in the mid size market, but yeah. like GVR wise, the the gross vehicle rating puts it up there with hmm. with the F one fifty Tundra, Ram uh, fifteen hundred Silverado, which I w- found surprising. That's Interesting. I'm surprised it weighs that much. Like, I don't. I mean, yeah, I don't know why it weighs so much. It's weird. I thought Actually, I thought they were lighter. So is but. towing capacity that bad on the newer ones? What was it like? I, I want to say uh, two thousand. That's 2000. not. It's well, not bad. It's that's, not horrible. That's but not horrible, but not great. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well. But then again, mm-hmm. what's the F one fifty? I mean, you guys might. I think the F one fifty tow capacity is about like five or six. I think probably like twelve on the new 12, ones. Twelve really? Twelve yeah. thousand? Yeah. Really? The F one fifties? No way. Holy shit. Really? I think so. I think mm. for the Are you sure? That's a lot. Yeah, I thought mm. it was, I thought it was only like six or something. So what what did they do different that's what you know my question is, is that what did they do? I mean, maybe you guys know your car fanatics or whoever. What do they do so much different than what the Honda Ridge line to be able to tow so much more? I don't know, it's just the power plant's different. Because, well, I think the F-150, the hybrid, which is, well, other than the, the Raptor that they just announced, they brought the V8 back for the Raptor. But the the um, the hybrid, the Eco, like, the, I don't forgot, there's so many freaking Ford engines. <laughs> there's like three V6s, but the big V6 twin turbo with the hybrid was for for up until recently was the biggest power plant for the F-150. That I think that was 12,000 pounds. But with the Raptor, uh, they just did just, I don't know, it was like, yeah, 700 horsepower is a V8. It, it probably doesn't tow as much as the uh, hybrid F-150, but I don't think anybody's We're going to have to look it up, man. They could pull 12,000. That's a lot of. I think so. I think it's 12,000. That's 000. a lot. I mean, it, it all comes down to um, six tons. Like that's, six ton. that's a little bit. That's six tons. Yeah, because a ton is two thousand pounds. Yeah, it all comes down to your options, because the more the more stuff you have optioned out, that obviously adds weight to the truck. Maybe I don't, I'm not sure if it affects towing capacity or payload, but I know it affects payload for sure. I would yeah. assume it affects towing capacity, because the more shit you add on, the more weight you're gonna add to the truck. But 
So know. just Google it real quick. I don't know. We'll, we'll Google <laughs> I mean, it. Of, we'll we'll figure it out. But I've been watching V six thousand pounds, and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, the Honda Ridgeline is is a unique vehicle. I like it. I have it. Oh, I, I bought it for a reason. I love it. And I, um, I really love it. Granted, it might not be your full size onboard truck. It is technically a full size based on weight. Size truck? Is that what full saying? size, really? Yeah, it's based full on size, weight. but it's, it's not classified. a truck. Yeah, it's classified they, as a mid size. But they label it as a truck, and then everybody else is like, no, it's not a truck. So I don't know. We're just feeding the fire to the, yeah. you know, in the sense of, of, of Honda owners. I like it. Don't care what anybody says. Yeah, as far as what classifies it as a truck, I. I don't know. Maybe it's the bed. Maybe it's the towing capacity. It can't maybe. be the bed because it has a bed. I know, but that's what I'm saying. I don't know why, what would make people classify it as a truck. Is it having the bed? Is it towing capacity? Is it the engine? Is it the size or the cab or whatever? You know, whatever the case may be. But for me, this quote-unquote truck is what I bought it for, what I need to tow. My kayak, my fishing gear, going camping, et cetera, et cetera. I okay. agree with you. Okay. The... Ford F-150, 3.5 uh-huh. liter V6 hybrid. Yes, sir. Has a towing capacity of 11,200 pounds. You're close. Wow. You were damn close. Dang. That's a that's kind of, that's a, that's well, a lot of weight. I only know because it's the truck I've been looking at. This guy. <laughs> there we go. There we go, everybody. Hey, that must be nice. The quote, unquote, be, truck. Must be nice to be single <laughs> and rich. actual truck. Must be nice. Yeah. See? This, a real truck. Uh-oh. Did we? Uh-oh. Oh, that's fine. Well, but, yeah. Don't get me wrong, you know, your truck's really Camera nice. Just ran out. It's way nicer than my truck. My truck truck. <laughs> but as, via, as like as a vehicle, your ridge line is really nice. Yeah, it is go. really dang nice. It's a very really, really great vehicle. Uh I highly recommend anybody driving it. It's one of the smoothest um utility vehicles out there. <laughs> Utility truck, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like I said, must be nice to be single and rich. See, these guys get to get brand new trucks. This guy just oh, bought one. This guy's looking into I don't have a brand This guy's looking into one. I've contemplated. Um, must be nice. See, I can't <laughs> contemplate that. So, uh, the camera already went off, but it's been fun, man. We're going to, uh, I'm going to do a little grilling here. We're going to barbecue. I'm smoking some chicken legs, uh, and I got some steaks about to throw on. Anything else for Mark Guy? Well, that's it for me. Ridgeline is a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you and like the five other people <laughs> would agree. But anyways, thanks for coming on, Mark. Yeah, no always problem. a always a pleasure. <laughs> oh yeah. Always a uh, pleasure. I, w- I won't turn on music next time, so I'll be <laughs> hopefully featured in more videos. <laughs> yeah, as long as Mark can keep the music off, he'll uh, appear in more videos. That's that's my fishing secret, guys. <laughs> 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 oh man appreciate that thanks mark though yep. um other than that let's eat because i'm about to grill here uh till next time everybody oh yeah don't forget oh. leave a review oh shit here we go okay yep. go ahead uh leave a review wherever you can leave a review it helps us out and uh that's the only thing we could ask for from you guys other than keep listening thank you yep spread the word the greatest underground podcast that deals with fishing and beer <laughs> it's getting really sp- and, and sometimes trucks, <laughs> yeah. real and, real trucks like the ridge line. line. Supposedly, <laughs> supposedly is a truck. All right, till next time, guys.